Today, I'm in Denver uh, organizing a wedding for a very, very special couple. And it's time to talk about what the bride does for the groom. We all know what the groom does for the bride. Supposedly, he takes care of her and works for her and nurtures her and her children and is responsible for them all the days of his life. What exactly is the role, the spiritual role, that comes to a couple when they get married? Especially, what is the role that the bride gives to the groom? Superficially, you would think that since the groom does everything, I mean, he does the act of consecrating the woman. She doesn't say anything at the chuppah. He says everything, so you would assume that it's all the groom's world. And the bride is just a receiver. She's just furniture. But the truth of the matter is, in the blessings of the chuppah, of the canopy, the bridal canopy, we say two different expressions of blessings, that God blesses the chosen, the groom with the, and the bride, and then it says God blesses the groom with the bride, meaning that the bride is the blessing for the groom. Not just that they're both receiving a blessing, but actually the bride is giving to the groom. The groom receives blessing from his bride. Now what exactly does that mean? Let me try to explain that to you in layman's terms, or at least the spiritual way of thinking how a wedding works. A man is symbolic of God's emotional traits. God's emotional traits are powerful, and they overcome, and they take on all things and all comers. And God is complete in God's emotion. So too, a man is supposed to be complete in his kindness, in his judgment, in his compassion, in his determination, in his ability to overcome things, in his ability to communicate, to connect with people. Why does a chosen, why does a male need a woman? Why do we say that without a woman the person is sad, the person is incomplete? And the answer may surprise you. The woman is a representative of the Shabbos, the seventh day, the holiest day of the week. The husband represents the six days of the week, and the bride represents Shabbos. And just as the Shabbos receives from the six days of the week, you have to work six days in order to eat on Shabbos, so too the bride receives from the husband. But then the bride transforms into something else. From recipient, she becomes the giver to her husband. Not just in pleasure, but actually becomes the one who expands the horizon of the husband in a way that the husband could never have gotten this. Let me explain this to you. According to the Kabbalah, the mystical teachings of the Torah, the six days of the week reflect the six sides of three-dimensional space. They represent space. It is the Shabbos that gives the extra dimension of time. But you see, time is a different dimension. And time is outside of the dimensions of space. We go from space to time, which means that we exist in this space and we expand our existence through the time that we have. So you would think that time is a continuation of sorts of the dimensions of space. That's what you would think, right? You would say that. That's what I think Einstein said that. That time is a function of space. But really, according to the Kabbalists, space is a function of time. Space is a result of time. And that when you have time, you actually are expanding space, not the other way around. And so, when the woman brings herself into the life of the husband, of the chosen, and they become a unit, then space receives time, and in doing so, expands his space in an almost infinite way, because time 
is above space, is beyond space, encompasses all of space, affects all of space. The Kala affects everything within her husband, within her husband. And in fact, according to Hasidic doctrine, there is a blessing that comes from any form of unity. When two people get together and they relate to each other and they enjoy each other's company, they give and they take and discuss, or they help each other, that unity brings about a blessing that's greater than both of them. When two people cooperate and create a venture, one buys the other sells, or they together make a partnership. That creates a bond which is greater than each one individually. So that's a blessing that comes to God from God whenever there's a unity. But the unity of a bride and a groom receives the blessing from God that is far beyond the blessing that comes just from ordinary unity. This is a blessing at the very, very core of whatever God is all about. Not God's expression, but the essence of God. And it is the call of the bride that brings this to the husband. Because it is ultimately, what is God's ultimate desire? God wants to be in this world. God did not create this world so that the world should be destroyed. All of you nuclear fanatics, you're crazy. Because God wants this world. God doesn't want destruction. You are the antithesis of what God wants. God wants us to live in this world. And God wants this world to be populated with people. And God wants people to be happy in the physical world. And God wants to be part of the physical world. And when a chosen brings a bride into this world, then he brings down through the office of the bride, through the office of the recipient, he brings down the blessing of the presence of God himself. And this is brought to the, the groom vis-a-vis -vis the bride. It is through the bride that the groom gets the blessing. That's what it's meant, that God will make the groom happy through the kala, because it is only through the kala, through the bride, that man, that the chosen, will receive God's presence, which is the ultimate blessing. And this is similar in parallel to the idea of the soul and the body. The soul is like the groom, the body is like the bride, and in this world, the groom gives life to the bride. The soul gives nurturing and life to the body. But in the future, when Messiah comes, the soul will live from the body. The body will give life to the soul. And so too, when Messiah comes, the role of the women will be revealed. And we will see just how great women are.